I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for the ones you have given me, because they are yours, and everything of mine is yours, and everything of yours is mine, and I have been glorified in them. Admirem de gloriam, AMDG, is the motto of my high school, Canisius College in Jakarta, where I spent six years there. I was very stubborn in high school and rarely went to church. So the meaning of the same DG motto was not what I aspired. The Canisius College is under the care of the fathers and brothers of the Society of Jesus, or the Jesuit, who used the motto of their founder, St. Ignatius Loyola. Admirem Dei Gloriam means for the greater glory of God. At that time, I liked that motto because it sounded cool in Latin. The glory of God was not something meaningful for me. I was yet to see the greatness of God. God's greatness can actually be seen at any time and in all places. Everything on earth and in the sky is His creation. All the various kinds of living creatures are expressions of God's incomprehensible creativity. I recently watched a movie, My Teacher Octopus. There was a filmmaker compelled to follow the life of an octopus every day for one year. It turns out that the octopus has extraordinary intelligence never before discovered. Its skill in camouflage to avoid the dangers of sharks is truly amazing. The octopus can change color, can play and interact in intimately with the filmmaker. Its way of hunting is also evolving. When the octopus failed several times to catch a lobster, it changed its tactics by pouncing from above. It can even ride on the shark's back when it, where it is the safest place to avoid a little bite. I was amazed not only at the octopus, but at God who made it so great. The octopus gives glory to God by being an octopus. But for us humans, this is not as easy as the octopus. We often lose our way of living as humans in the way God had intended. Our weaknesses and imperfections often become stumbling blocks that cause our lives to be riddled with evil, injustice, greed, envy, infidelity, drunkenness, and moral slump. Our life no longer reflects who we, re who we really are as human beings. Our lives no longer give glory to God. Saint Irenaeus said, The glory of God is humans fully alive. Today Jesus says that He has been glorified in His followers, who are the apostles and all of us whom Christ Himself chose. Is it true? Have my life and yours glorified God? Or have we stolen God's glory? Have we glorified ourselves before others? God is glorious. He does need praises from humans. But we are truly blessed when other people see the greatness of God in our lives. A lady exclaims in her Magnificat, My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. She could see the greatness of God and could no longer contain her heart, which overflows with God's greatness. This is a sign of a person whose life glorifies God, because from the bottom of her heart, she can see the greatness of God. Maybe we think that for our Mother Mary, glorifying God is easy because she was full of grace and without sin. For all of us who are struggling with sin, is it still possible to glorify God? St. Paul once asked God to take away the thorns in his flesh. 
so that he could no longer be weak and prone to sin. But God said that his grace was sufficient for him. Finally, for St. Paul, the only thing he is proud of was his weakness, because in his weakness he could experience God's grace that strengthened him. Here lies the mystery of God's greatness. The greatest glory of God is His mercy. God is truly glorified because of His infinite forgiveness. Our weaknesses, even our grave sins, are no longer a stumbling block to God's glory. If we are willing to accept and embrace His forgiveness, unrepented sin does not glorify God. Sin, however great, will glorify God if forgiveness and repentance take place. Our lives glorify God when our hearts are full of gratitude for God's forgiveness for all our sins. Jesus said today, this is eternal life, that they know you, the one only true God, and know Jesus Christ whom you have sent. As we come to know the generosity of God the Father and Christ's sacrifice that redeems us, eternal life has already begun. When eternal life begins, our life begins to reflect the glory of God. A life filled with gratitude for God's graciousness is but the fullness of a human life. Admirem Dei Gloria All for the glory of God. Amen.